We're back once again. Last week's cannon fodder gave us a peek at a new Warzone scenario, and this week dives further into the next major update for Halo 5. Let's take a look. We open with a description for a new armor set known as Dynasty. The Dynasty is a brawler armor variant that excels in close range firefights through a combination of resilience and improved situational awareness. Having in many ways effectively replaced older CQB and CQC designs, the Dynasty helmet is covered by layers of compressed carbon nanotubes and hyperdiamond sheets, making it fantastically durable and expensive. It's a very simple, sleek look. The body kind of reminds me of the Halo 3 EOD body, and the head does share a passing resemblance with CQB, albeit, in the case of both armor pieces, very, very smoothed over. In some ways, it also reminds me of anime mechs, but I can't put my finger on which one are ones. Am I alone in that? Next up is a peek at the lore behind a mythic gravity hammer known as Tartarus's gavel. That's not to say that it was used by Tartarus, he only used his trusted fist of root, but it carries the chieftain's name. As the flavor text Grimm provided explains, during Mr. Mohawk's ascension to power, he used his relationship with the prophets to reward loyal lieutenants with special advanced weaponry straight from the sacred promissory. Reading about that, I'm suddenly reminded of the Halo Wars 2 Chieftain's Energy Mace, and I can't help but wonder if it might have been one of those advanced weapons Tartarus handed out, depending on when the game is set. I'm also reminded that the Fist of Root is not yet an alternate skin for the Gravity Hammer. Get on it, 343. Moving forward, we have a couple of interesting wrecks from the Meridian update, both in terms of lore and gameplay. First up is the Hannibal Mantis. Assembled by Hannibal Weapons Systems, this prototype Skunk Works Mantis variant is outfitted with a rapid-fire Gauss turret and ion field missile warheads. That is to say, missiles that, on impact, release submunitions that cause widespread sporadic damage. It also creates an EMP when the stomp attack is used. After that, we have the Hannibal Scorpion, featuring a Gauss turret and a freaking laser cannon. So, that's pretty wizard. But in all seriousness, both vehicles sound fantastic and I can't wait to try them out. Hopefully I won't die two seconds after summoning them. Next up is something I think many people have seen or heard about by now, the Warzone Firefight gameplay trailer. It doesn't reveal too much, but here's what has been deciphered from the trailer. Matches last five rounds, each round with a time limit, not unlike Warzone Assault. Lives do not seem to be present in this iteration of Firefight. Rounds can seem to feature particular goals, such as killing 15 knights. The mode features new red bosses, some of which are seen carrying wreck items, such as this knight wielding the Heartseeker. The game mode allows for up to 8 players rather than the traditional 4. And most interesting of all, people spotted what is unmistakably a brute plasma rifle. While it's no cause to hope for the return of the space apes themselves, it's a welcome addition that might also hint at the return of the classic plasma rifle. Overall, the game mode is shaping up to be an exciting experience. It's sad that we won't be seeing the traditional firefight, at least not for now, but I'll take what we can get in the meantime. Still, I'm almost certain that it will be an online-only mode, just like other Warzone variants. Next up, we have a very interesting piece of canon. As you may or may not know, this weekend saw the addition of new community-made maps into BTB. While Forge maps have been canonized before, this particular entry is something else entirely. As the UNSC struggles to maintain a cohesive presence across colonized space, it's inevitable that organization infrastructure must adjust and adapt. With many departments stretched even thinner, the military has begun recruiting young design talent eager to make a name for themselves in the War Games Simulation Program via the UNSC Cartographer Initiative. This has led to an influx of fledgling simulation environments, incorporating new architectural ideologies and advanced tactical challenges to help keep the Spartan branch operating at razor edge efficiency. In short, community cartography is canon. The final section today is about Killer Instinct. Over on UltraCombo.com, Grimm gave an in-depth look at the various Sangheili skins coming to Killer Instinct. The actual info is old news to loyal canonites, but the post does feature in-game images of these skins and a trailer showing them off. Check it out if you're interested, link in the description. And with that, we close out the main article and come to the new universe entry, the MA-20 Main Battle Tank or Scorpion. The first tank to hold the Scorpion name was the M808, which entered service in 2218. Ever since, the Scorpion has been the template for all UNSC main battle tanks. The new Scorpion, the MA-20, is heavier armored but is lighter in weight and just as mobile as its predecessors thanks to recent technological advances and breakthroughs. The new 150mm M990 Electrothermal Chemical Smooth Bore Cannon breaks Legacy Ammo Compatibility, or rather is not backwards compatible, in favor of accommodating planned launched munition and future advancements in energetic propellants. Major variants include the aforementioned M808, 
the M808B that we all know from Halo CE and Halo 2, the M808B2, known as the Sun Devil. This variant replaces the 90mm cannon with twin-linked 40mm autocannons. Supposedly designed for anti-air, it was primarily used in an anti-infantry role during the insurrection. The M808B3, known as the Tarantula, used for heavy fire support, this featured two mounted pods on the turret that could fire clusters of hypervelocity scimitar rockets. This proved largely ineffective against the Covenant, however, prompting many B3s to be converted back to the standard M808B. Finally, the M808C, the variant seen in Halo 3 through 4. And that just about does it for today. Before we go, a quick shout out to Spartan Games, which just announced Halo Ground Command, a companion game to Halo Fleet Battles. While not a lot is known just yet, the tabletop game is coming out this year. And boy, am I going to be broke. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.